In this lesson, we are going to discuss set operations. Suppose that A and B are sets, both belonging to some universal set U. The union of A and B is a set of all elements in at least one of A or B. So therefore, you belong in the set A union B if you belong in A or you belong in B. Next, the intersection is the set of all elements that belong in both A and B. Hence, the elements will be in this region. You belong in both A and B. And lastly, the difference A minus B is a set of all elements of A that are not in B. So it will be the elements in A but are not in B. Hence, we have this region. Suppose that the universal set is the set of natural numbers from 1 to 10. A is a set 2, 3, 5, 7, and B is a set containing 2, 4, 6, A, and 10. Let us find the following. A minus B will be the elements of A but are not in B. So therefore, we just have to remove the elements in A that are in B. So therefore, we have to remove 2 only because 2 is in B. So this is 3, 5, 7. A intersection B is a set of elements that are common to A and B. So therefore, it's just the set containing the element 2. B minus A is the set coming from B, but we have to remove the elements that are in A. So we just remove 2 because 2 is in A. So therefore, B minus A would be the set containing 4, 6, 8, and 10. Here are some results on union, intersection, and difference. Suppose that A, B, and C are sets. A set will always be a subset of itself union another set. We can see this from our Venn diagram. The set A is a subset of A union B. A union B is just these two circles combined. Next, we also have that the intersection will always be a subset of one of the sets. So in this case, we have A intersection B, which is this region. This is part of A. This is included in A. Next. If you get the intersection of the null set with any set, the answer will always be the null set. And if you get the union of the null set with any set, the result will just be the set itself. Next, we have the idempotent laws. The intersection of a set with itself is just equal to itself. And the union of a set with itself is still itself. Next, the set A minus the null set, of course. That is just equal to A because this means that you are removing nothing. You are not removing anything from A. So you still get the set A. Number 8 says that the empty set, you take away the elements of A, of course, will still be the null set. Let us prove some of the following items. First, let us prove one. We want to show that A is a subset of A union B. How do we prove that? one set is a subset of another, you get an arbitrary element on the first set and show that it is an element of the second set. So let's call this x. That's an arbitrary element of A. And we want to show that x is in A union B. Is that true? Yes, because x is an element of A or x is an element of B as well. Here we are using the fact that P implies P or Q. X is an element of A implies that X is in A or X is in B. So thus, X is an element of A union B. Therefore, we have just shown that A is a subset of A union B. Next, we will show that the intersection of the empty set with any set will be the empty set. Now here's a good tip for you. When you are showing that a set is empty, it's always good to proceed by contradiction. So we suppose that 
A intersection, the empty set, is not empty. What does it mean? If a set is not empty, then it means that there exists at least one element. So let's call that X. This is an element of A intersection, the empty set. But by definition, when you belong to the intersection, it means that you belong to both sets. Hence, we have X is in A and, because this is intersection, X is an element of the empty set. And this is a contradiction. So since X definitely cannot be an element of the null set, we must have that A intersection, the null set, must be the empty set. Next, we want to show that A minus the empty set is equal to itself. To show that they are equal, we will show that they are subsets of each other. So we want to show here that A minus the empty set is a subset of A. To prove this, we get an arbitrary element of A minus the empty set. This means that X is in A and X is not in the empty set. Of course, that is true. X is not in the empty set. Now, take note here that we already have X is in A. So, we can just say, therefore, X is in A. Here, we are using this one, P and Q, therefore, P. This is a tautology. This is what we used here. X is in A and X is not in the null set. Therefore, X is in A. This is my P here. Next, we will show that A is a subset of A minus the empty set. So to do that, we have, we get an arbitrary element of A and show that it is an element of A minus the empty set. Since the null set does not contain any element, we have that X must not be in the null set. So therefore, combining this, X is in A and X is not in the null set means that X is an element of A minus the empty set. So if we combine this to, we have now shown that A minus the null set is equal to A. Here are some more results. First, we have the commutative loss. This is saying that set union and set intersection is commutative. The order does not matter. We have also the associative loss. If you just have the same operation, everything here is just union, the parenthesis does not really matter. So therefore, we just write this as A union B union C. Similarly, for intersection, if you just have the same set operation, the parenthesis does not really matter. So we have A intersection B intersection C. Next, we have our distributive loss. If you now have different set operations, one is intersection and one is union, you can sort of distribute the set. So you now have A intersection B union A intersection C. Let us prove the distributive law. So how do we show that these two sets are equal? We show that they are subsets of each other. First, I will show that this is a subset of this set. In order to prove that one set is a subset of another, we will get an arbitrary element here. Let's call that X. X is in A union B intersection C. What does it mean for an object? To be an element of the union, it means that X is in A or X is in B intersection C. We want to show that X is an element of A union B and X is an element of A union C. When you have a premise which involves or, I always divide it into cases. So for case 1, suppose that X is in A. What do we want to show? We want to show that X is an element of this one. A union B and A union C. 
By part 1 of slide 5, A is a subset of A union B and A is a subset of A union C also. But since X is in A, X is in A and A is a subset of these two sets, we now have that X is an element of A union B and so that becomes intersection a union C. So we have shown in the first case that X is an element of this set. Next, for our second case, we want to show that we should have X is an element of A union B and X is an element of A union C as well. By definition, X is an element of B and X is an element of C. Just like what we did with case 1, since X is an element of B and B is a subset of A union B, I now have that X must be an element of A union B and I will also use this X is an element of C to show that it is an element of A union C. X is an element of C which is a subset of a union C. And therefore, X is an element of A union C. Since both of these are true, X is in A union B and X is in A union C, we have that X is an element of A union B and A union C. In both cases, we have shown that X is an element of A union B intersection A union C. Hence, we now have that A union B intersection C is a subset of this set. For the other direction, that is left as an exercise. Here are some more results on union intersection and difference. We have equivalent statements for the union of a set to be equal to one of the sets. A union B is equal to B if and only if A is a subset of B. Moreover, A is a subset of B if and only if A intersection B is equal to A. So if we draw the Venn diagram of 1 and 2, a is a subset of B if and only if the union of A and B is of course B and the intersection of A and B will just be the set A, the smaller set. Numbers 3 and 4 is saying that if A is a subset of B, just like what we have here, it's sort of we can get the union of the, we can get the union of each set with another set and you still have the same relationship. They will still be subsets of each other. Same is true for part 4. First, let us prove statements 1 and 3. This is a biconditional, so therefore, we will prove both directions. So for this part, we want to show that a subset of B implies that their union will just be the bigger set, B. This is an implication, so therefore we suppose our premise. Suppose A is a subset of B. This is our goal. A union B is equal to B. Since we are proving equality of sets, we will show that they are subsets of each other. Which one is definitely a subset of the other? Again, by part 1 of slide 5, what is that? B is a subset of A union B. Because B is here and B is here also. When you get the union with another set, B will still be a subset of this set. So therefore, we just have to show that A union B is a subset of B. I am using green to tell you what we want to show. That is not part of the proof. How do we show that A union B is a subset of B? We get an arbitrary element in A union B and show that it is an element of B. 
x is an element of A union B means that x is in A or x is in B. You have a premise here. This is part of your premise, right? That x is in A or x is in B. Whenever you see or here, that signals that you can break it into cases. If x is in A, what is it that you want to do? You want to show that it is in B. Is it true that x will also be in B? Yes, because look at what you have here. Our assumption is that A is a subset of B. Since A is a subset of B and x is in A, then we must have that x must be an element of B. For the second case, x is in B, we are done. There is nothing to do here. Because remember, what do we want to show? We started with an x element of A union B. This one, we wanted to show that it will always be in B. So in both of these cases, we ended up with x being in B. So thus, A union B is a subset of B. Hence, we were able to show that B is a subset of A union B and A union B is a subset of B. Combining these two, we now have that B is equal to A union B. For the other direction, we want to show that A union B equals B implies that A must be a subset of B. Let us suppose our premise again. Suppose that A union B is equal to B. We want to show that A is a subset of B. To show that A is a subset of B, I will not use the standard method of getting an element in A and showing that it is an element of B. I will make use of the previous results that we already had. By part 1 again of slide 5, that is very useful for us. We keep on going back to that one. Remember, I wanted to end up with A being a subset of B. I know that A is a subset of A union B. I use this because I know something about A union B. A union B, which is equal to B. And therefore, we have just shown here that A is a subset of B. And that concludes our proof. We were able to show both directions.